Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. I represent Storm Spirit players around the world, and inside the channel, you'll find guides on Storm, other heroes, middle lane mechanics, streams, and coaching sessions. Your support keeps the content flowing, and if you'd like to contribute, find out how down below. With all that said, let's go. For the past few patches, Storm globally has a below 50% win rate, so new and returning players who would like to incorporate Storm into their hero rotation might have trouble figuring out how to make it work. Today, together, we will talk about what choices we can make to win more consistently. For the purpose of this video, I won't go into too much detail regarding every aspect of the match, such as laning, itemization, etc., but rather briefly explain the principle for every action or inaction and how they affect my gameplay. There's also not much to say about the thought processes behind how to execute various initiations and fights, so for these, I'll just show you the engagements instead. Let's begin. Since I know I'm laning against a Pudge, I don't need to bring any more regen than my usual setup, which allows me to get a faster bottle and refill it with the minute 2 rune. As for the matchup itself, Pudge's goal is to reach level 6 as fast as possible, so that he can be active around the map and secure space with his team. His skill potential doesn't change much regardless of how well he did in the lane, so as a storm I focus my efforts on securing my own farm and only harass Budge on opportune moments instead of every 3 second. And the fact that Budge's only kill potential on me is him landing his hook means that for the most part I should have a free lane. I'm Gabe Newell. You've just achieved first blood. Thanks and have fun. And now is a good time to take a look at the rest of their heroes. Neither of them are particularly good at hitting towers, nor they have decent man fight capabilities. It is a good bet that while they are possibly stronger during early to mid game, it is unlikely they will be able to breach high ground. So the fact that I have free lane, the fact that Budge alone isn't going to just delete heroes like a Klinx or Huskar would, and the previously discussed educated guess that the game won't end in 30 minutes, I get 3 reasons why Midas will be great pickup in this match. So the entirety of my early game is spent rotating lane to runes to jungle, only joining the fights that are conveniently near farm spots. Just two nulls and a constantly running clarity is enough for me to secure a 9 minute Midas, and having Midas as source of income allows me to be much more flexible with my next item. From here on, I could go Yules, I could go Bloodstone, and I could go straight BKB. Considering we did a good job defending so far, and we are no rush to end, getting Bloodstone next will provide me with much needed mid game regeneration. And with reach uncovered, I can easily stack defensive items next. <laughs> Never refuse gold given. During team fights, the less items I have, the less region I have, the less likely I am to participate in the fights. And if I do join the fights, I prefer walking there to save as much mana as possible and only jump if I'm sure I'll secure a kill that way. More than two kills, but less than four kills. As soon as the fight is over, I return back to the closest farm spot, popping clarity and mangoing up as soon as convenient. Until Storm has his region covered, there is no point walking with the team if, after a few spells, he is going to be out of mana and won't contribute anything. 
Only after either Bloodstone or BKB, ideally both, should Storm start to take more aggressive farm, since he will be able to either escape the ganks on himself or quickly join the ganks on his team. Dyer's middle tower just went down. Over here now! Oh, what I miss! I'm over here! And once Storm is sufficiently farmed, he has no trouble initiating the fights since he has every tool imaginable to survive the engagements. So, as a storm, your early game should be spent exclusively farming lane to jungle, only joining fights when convenient. In the mid game, with the first bigger item, Storm can now comfortably join the fights that break out around the map, taking progressively more dangerous farm. And entering late game, if everything went to the plan, Storm is now a powerhouse that can initiate fights or perform pickoffs all across the map, securing all the space for his entire team. Touché! I'm over here. Dyer's bottom tower needs some help. It looks like Dyer fortified their structures. Yeah. <laughs> here I am. Oh -ho! Dyer's bottom tower needs some help. Radiant structures have been snow fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is being chipped away. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Over here now. What's up? So, like I said, I only gave brief summaries of each part of the match, and in the future I'll go into much more detail regarding each individual aspect, such as when to go Midas, when not to go Midas, what other optimization options are good for, how to recover from bad early game, and many more topics, too many to list at this moment. For now, I hope this video gave you a good look at Storm's potential, I've covered most of the match, and I'll leave you with the rest of it. Good luck! Zap! Looking for me! He's over here now! Here I am! Radiant's top tower has looked better. Top 
If you were a millennial, I'd say wicked sick. happening to Radiant's bottom tower. Oh, Dyer's courier got killed. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, what I miss? Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's ancient is under attack. 
They're beating on Dyer's victory! Tower.